Andrea here and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things nature, animals and sustainability. Right now I am in beautiful Albufera. It is a beautiful day and I'm super excited because we're going to be filming our final project that was part of our big environmental adventure where we're traveling throughout the whole Portugal for the last month filming environmental initiatives. Our first project was about reforesting an area of Portugal, Monchique, that was severely damaged by the fire. Our second project was about rescuing, rehabilitating and releasing wildlife. And our third project is going to be with Marine Research Association. For the next week, we will join a team of marine researchers. We will be going out in the sea on a tiny boat. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see some dolphins and maybe even other marine animals. We will of course learn everything about the research that they're doing here about challenges and opportunities of this area and I am personally very excited to experience the life of marine researcher. Are you excited? Are you ready to see how that looks like? Let's get straight into it. Let's do it. This is AIM, a team of sea-loving researchers who created this project to educate general public about importance of preserving marine life. They use their knowledge and research to propose changes in local legislations and conservation practices. They take on students for internships and provide important field experience. They also go out into the sea almost every day and they get to connect with the ocean and see incredible things. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and watch this video till the end because what we managed to witness and the footage that you're about to see is something unbelievable, super rare to witness and to document in the wild. AIM is focusing on three main aspects, research, conservation and education. So let's dive into it more. On a daily basis, this AIM research vessel heads out into the sea to collect data. They collect data about the weather, behavior, about the signs that help to locate marine animals, and they collect the data about any unusual events and behaviors that happen. Like for example, this dolphin that is being entangled in plastic, or something shocking that I am about to show you next. So we've seen animals playing, we've seen dolphins playing with plastic bags, we've seen whales in tangled in uh, fishing nets and uh, rope nets. So unfortunately today we found this in the ocean and it wasn't just floating in the ocean. We actually found it because dolphins were playing with it. The first time we spotted it, it was on a dolphin's head. Um, he flipped it to his tail. Other ones started playing around with it. And we were actually pretty surprised when we finally pulled it out of the water how massive it was. <laughs> These lucky people managed to find pots of dolphins quite often in those waters, as well as rare visitors such as sharks and whales. The team managed to witness it during our stay here. This is the best feeling in the world. I cannot even begin to express how happy I feel right now. I already, already cried like five times <laughs> today <laughs> because this is just so precious. The data that they collect contributes to scientific studies that help to update the conservation status of marine animals. Many of these expeditions have positively impacted the sea and helped to make sustainable and ethical decisions to ensure that the sea is taken care of. We actually use the dorsal fin of the dolphins to identify individuals and that allows us to count them and also follow them over time. So basically you have to study each species and each population in, in order to create yeah. adequate regulations. The biggest uh, concerns are with sound because they are very acoustic creatures. So the presence of vessels uh, will cause a lot of noise pollution, which is detrimental to their hearing and communication. Additionally, AIM works with boat tour companies to improve sustainable wildlife viewing practices, such as whale watching and dolphin tours. In current times, especially when the tourism is returning, we all want to travel and we want to see wildlife and connect to nature, but it is important to do it right and to make sure that we keep our ecosystems healthy. What we are observing now here is a feeding moment where we have maybe 100 or 150 
50 dolphins feeding around us. Uh, so right now we want to understand the basic things, uh, how many dolphins we have, what species we have, what they are doing, so what is the habitat use. And with that information we can uh, get together, like for example, a group of measures to, to preserve and conserve these animals here. So we can talk with the politicians and talk with the um, uh, decision makers to, to give them our inputs and say, well, this is what we should do. We want to understand them to better protect them. Protect but from who? From us? From, yeah, mostly us. Mostly us. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel because in the next video we are going to be talking about tourism and ethical practices for whale watching. I am pretty sure that you want to be a responsible tourist and you want to know this kind of information. And like this video while you add it, your likes and comments really help us to create more educational environmental content. Thank you! AIM closely works with local tour operators and teaches them about the importance of providing ethical animal encounters and doing so in a way that is less harmful and disturbing for wildlife. People must first be aware of the issue, then giving information about why it is happening while explaining how we are connected to the issue, and finally then given the tools to actively fix the problem. Spending a few days on the research boat was an incredible experience. I absolutely could not hold my emotions when I saw dolphins for the first time. I even became a meme for the interns that day. You are great. You're big. You're gorgeous. I love you. So today was our first official day with AIM and what a day it was seeing those dolphins in the crystal clear water on this beautiful day i was just standing there and thinking about what what is my life how freaking grateful i am to live on this planet to experience those encounters with animals to feel my heart being so full of love for nature, for our planet, for, for environment. Springtime and summertime we have our internship program going on. Uh, we also do other field courses to train people. We have uh, workshops going on pretty much all year round. We, we want to make this a very personal learning experience for everyone. Dolphins are just the most stunning, gracious, perfect creatures. They are incredibly intelligent, like us or even more. They're playful, they have social structures, relationships, and you can spend hours or the whole lifetime, like those guys, studying their behavior. The founder of AIM, Joanna, has spent most of her life studying dolphins and during our time with them, we were able to witness something that has only been captured several times before. The behavior that proves, once again, that animals have feelings and they're capable of experiencing them and showing feelings like grief in this case. Oh my god! Yeah, this one, this one, yeah, the smaller no, one. We're looking one. here at the dead body no, of a little dolphin calf. We observed mother grieving the loss of her baby. For hours, she was trying to bring the dead calf to the surface, trying to revive it. She was circling around the boat and it almost felt like she was asking for help. But the whole point of the research is to not interfere. We humans are still part of nature and we have to let it run its course and to let the mother mourn the loss of her dead. Uh, it looks also very fresh, so it's not dead for a long time. I think this is the first time we have a, a record of this in Portugal. I think they are really like crying or uh, having this feeling of a loss. Well, I think this is a clear proof of how intelligent these animals are. This scene was absolutely heartbreaking and it left me in tears yet again. But for the team, it was an incredible lucky moment. A moment each researcher is dreaming about. To to capture, document and study the behavior that people do not know much about yet. The behavior that proves the intelligence of species. The behavior that we can learn from. And so it's very similar what happens in primates to what happens in, in, um, in dolphins. I think when we sort of understand some things that happen in, the, in, in nature and then we can 
maybe give some insights of how, how things happen with us. The entire oceans are facing a lot of problems, um, pollution, overfishing, climate change, all those things that we are more aware nowadays and that we hear people talking more. Start respecting uh, nature and start seeing yourself as part of nature. It's not something that you can disconnect. You're part of it, either you want it or not. There are so many organizations that are helping us to conserve the oceans, such as the World Cetacean Alliance, which addresses issues facing cetaceans and their ocean habitats. Ocean Alliance that revolutionized marine science research by using drones. And Oceanic Global that educates individuals, communities, and industries on solutions that create positive change in our environment. You can learn more about all of those organizations and how you can get involved in the description to this video. There are so many organizations that are helping us to conserve the oceans. Together, they're all on the mission to raise awareness and appreciation for our oceans through education. Those people are living their passion while serving such an important mission, and it is inspiring. Are you inspired? Well, go ahead and study environmental sciences or join AIM. They offer field experiences and internships, and it's just a perfect way to understand if living in unity with the ocean is something for you.